much as I thought I could plan a podcast, that is not going to happen. I do not have the mindset to sit here. Chop up, block, block, how I'm going to tell you about weight loss and weight gain. Good morning on this Wednesday, January 19th, 2022. The time is 9.53 a.m. And welcome to Early in the A.M. with Isha. Sitting in a box again. Figuring why I'm not as successful with this as I'm supposed to be. And it's not even about my dreams. It's not about my dreams at all. My dreams are dead. This is just a life source. This is what I'm doing because I'm tied to something that's dead and in the grave and I can't let it go. I don't know if you ever heard your your folks talk about people still tied to people who are dead and they don't know how to let go. That's what I am. I'm one of those people who's just tied to a dream that's just the ship has sailed and it's dead and gone and I don't know how to let go. So I'm doing something to keep me from doing something. This is the safest thing I can do next to talking to a therapist. The cheapest thing I can do, I should say, next to talking to a therapist. That's what this is. It's not even, I done paid all this money up front for like a yearly issue and all this other stuff. And I'm not going to make any money off of this, but I know I can be something, do something 10 times worse just from coping from the stress and the regret of it all. There's a whole lot of things going on in my life that I'm just, I can't tell you publicly. I'm, I'm trying to talk around the subject, but I'm not strong enough to say what it is. I haven't really come full circle with it anyway to say exactly what it is. So a lot of things people go through, you don't talk about it to after you've completed the course, to after you've done the abuse and then got the help. And then you're at a safe distance away where you could talk about it safely and discreetly without it coming back on you. And I'm not there yet. I don't know if I'll ever be there yet. So I'm kind of just bouncing around, hoping you'll get the picture. But without a complete picture, you, you know, you can't, you, won't, you truly won't know what I'm talking about. And I think half of the reason why I'm not successful, even with this in life, is because the people I love are in it with me. The people I love the most, they have no idea what I've gone through. They had to hear my story from other people. And so informing their own opinions, you know, they they throw their dirt in so they can, you know, get rid of two birds and one stone. And that just makes my burden even even heavier. And it just makes the journey around the sun that much more tedious. You know what I mean? The only thing I really want out of all of this bullshit is to be able to become a unit with them again and then to have all my shit be able to fit in a box. So when it's time for us to move, I can just pick up my unit and move and carry my weight like I'm supposed to. You can't really move with the people you're supposed to move with if you got so many boxes to pull alongside you, you keep getting left in the dust. And then you try to catch the next train, but it's with a whole new set of people uh-huh. under a whole new set of rules. And they're moving a lot different than you move. And if you don't keep up with them, you're going to get left again. And I just got left so many times that I, I, I don't know. It's hard to say. And yeah, that's how I feel. That's exactly how I feel about it. It's definitely this whole, a lot of my dreams are just so far gone. And I'm just at this place, at this place where I'm just trying to make sense of how I'm feeling. Even if, you know, it's just headaches 90% of the time. I'm trying to pinpoint the headache and where it's coming from. I'm literally trying to do the most dangerous thing. I'm trying to fight to the front of a line. With a person who's so used to being at the front of the line, their body is just built different. A lot different than mine. And then I'm trying to explain to him I need his help. 
I, I, I want to help squash something, but I can't. The, it's linked to so many other dramas. It'll just start a whole new drama with something I shouldn't be involved in to begin with. Sex is never the way to solve a problem. It's not. It's, it's lust at its lowest level. It's a low level lust. It really is. And the thing is, I have a mom who's a. She's too much of a realist. She finds the bullshit and everything, and she cusses it right out. And she's been doing this my whole life, and I hate it so much that I rebel against it, and I go look for the light and everything, even when it's just fucking complete darkness there. It can be a blackout. And I'm the one like, ooh, look at the sun. And everybody's like, I can't see two feet in front of me. Why do you think the sun is out? It's a whole illusion I, I branded on myself just so I could see something good and everything. Because my issue was there was so much negativity coming out of everything where I lived, especially when I went to this, got to this all-white high school. I think I exaggerated really hard. And what made it worse is exaggerating on top of exercise. I think that's why God allowed my bubble to burst the way he did. She was like, Isha, I understand that. But you done put, took that exaggerative imagination of yours and put it on top of that track, volleyball, basketball body, and you done made things a thousand times worse, and you don't even know. So just to save yourself, we're just going to burst this bubble and have you slowly come back to earth where you're supposed to be. You'll see what it is soon enough. I was highly there. It's like I just had this bottle full of good intentions. But they were misguided, was misled, and it was very inappropriate. I want to cry about it, but that's the truth does. It makes you want to cry, you know. It makes you want to lift your eyes up a little bit. Anyway, there's nothing left to do. I'm sitting still so I can make sure there's a, a cornerstone for this, but being a cornerstone <laughs> does not mean you get to see what's going on. You don't get to know every single itty bitty detail. And that's the problem information. Who's controlling my personal information if it's not me? That's the problem. Trying to move on, do bigger and better things, make more money. But being patient. It's, it's almost unbearable at times. Yeah, so. I gotta get dressed. Supposed to be going out today. I gotta get a little bit of food. It's 10 o'clock and I'm still in bed. I'm almost at the end of season four of The Shy. I'm trying to space it out a little bit. Because I don't watch like three freaking seasons in like two weeks. Is it two weeks? It's been like a week. I was, at first I was watching two episodes a night. And then it got to the point I was watching two episodes a night. And like two and three episodes on the daytime. And then it's been about two weeks. And now I'm at like halfway through season four. I think I'm at episode 7, I think. Yeah, but, uh... I don't know. You ever been real volatile? And you have, like, your feelings all about you. Like, sitting in the middle of the floor and all your toys are all around you in a circle. And then, you know what I mean? You can't keep your eyes on everything. You just want to make sure it's around you. You're not really playing with it. You just want it around you. You only got two hands, but hands are coming up and pulling the things under or away from you. And it might be for your protection. You don't know, but all you know is they moved it. And then you react, you react from 
you know, your disposition or your angry point. Even if the person's intentions were good, you don't know that they're good. Because they're not coming up to you and saying, let me move this toy. Let me move this toy because it's this. They just move it. And then you're supposed to guess or you're just supposed to let it happen. But you're in a lot of real volatile position. Your feelings are really raw. And your nerves are damaged. And you, some of the things you're hearing in your head don't match what's going on on the outside. And that can be the difference between someone helping you and someone hurting you. I've gone through that a lot. I have a lot of misconceptions in my head. A lot of exaggerated feelings. And a lot of times something very soft, very soft to the touch can feel like a, a small stab wound to the arm. Like the feelings aren't matched. Like something on the outside is ten times worse on the inside. Like the two aren't balanced. So a lot of times I force myself to be quiet. To hear one little thing and then I miss out responding on a thousand or other things. Because it takes so much effort to keep things in line. I go through that a lot. And then I get in a good feeling. Like I'll get up. And when I get up, believe me, my high times be high. I be up there. It be good for everybody. But in celebrating being good, I look like I'm exaggerating or I'm teasing someone who's having a bad day. Or... Um, throwing my light on someone and it just hits them in the eye the wrong way and they think I'm trying to blind them or you know what I mean it's type of feelings that aren't necessary for them some people feel you're, you're in the hood you can't be that kind of happy they're going to misconstrue that happiness for weakness and they're going to try to product you or some crazy shit like that. I mean the stuff that comes across my mind aren't worth thinking half the time you don't want to be able to think those things. You want it to flow past you like water through your fingers, like wind through your hand. You don't want to think about it any other way. That's what happens, though. And then you got this love pent up in your chest, and you feel like that's how you feel, but you don't know you feel that way. It's just somebody feels like somebody's molesting you. Like, they're molesting your spirit and then they arouse you just to see if they can get a rise out of you. Uh, I miss my grandma. I don't talk to her like I used to. <sighs> you know, I wish I could care about these things. But my life is too short to care about being embarrassed. I've been embarrassed so bad. And for so long, I guess being embarrassed is supposed to feel fresh. It doesn't feel fresh. It doesn't. It's more embarrassing if I said that there's someone who's been through worse in life than I have. And they didn't live this long either. They went through a whole bunch of shit, and then they were snuffed out in their prime. Before any of their things could manifest, they got snuffed out. Well, it's it's that whole, uh, you know, it's investments, the investment property theory. You know, it's the investors that keep the product away from you. It's like, what we put into it is worth more than you can get out of it. So if we pull out of this product, it won't exist. So you should just stay away from our shelves or whatever. It's a personal decision. You know what I mean? It's like the basketball player with a thousand mothers. And all of them are telling him which way to play, who he can play with, who he can't play with. You can only play with people who could become one of us. She can't become one of us, she can't play. I mean, that's, you know, that's good and everything, but it's just a matter of control, having control. What what kind of control is most important to you? Like, for me, having control over my, my freaking body, over my freaking sexual urges, that's the, one of the most, not the most important, but it's very important to me. It's very important. 
You know what else is important to me that I've lost sight of? My sobriety. Sobriety is supposed to be a strong, forceful thing. And I can't be strong and forceful in my sobriety because of somebody who's being strong and forceful and they drunk.